Uh, we'll call this hearing to order, uh, to public hearing to order. Uh, the Macon County Board of Commissioners, this is to do with the proposed subdivision ordinance amendment. Um, public hearing was scheduled to get at 6.30, and as we announced earlier, that would be uh, postponed to the end of the first hearing. Uh, we do have a number of speakers signed up for this one as well, and we will uh, move through this. If you happen to come in late, uh, I read our, our county procedures that we'll give each person three minutes to speak. Uh, we will give you up to three minutes, and uh, we will use that time to hear what you have to say. We have Mr. Mike Jackson. Uh, Let's, uh, let's do this. I want to have Chester read uh, this this ordinance. Uh, if you would, Chester, at this time, let me give you the microphone. Please. I'll read it. Okay. Again, this is a uh, draft amendment. The purpose of it is for discussion this evening. <coughs> amendment to subdivision ordinance of the County of Bank of North Carolina, that whereas Macon County Board of Commissioners adopted the subdivision ordinance of the County of Macon, North Carolina. Let me start over. Amendment to the subdivision ordinance of the County of Macon, North Carolina, that whereas the Macon County Board of Commissioners adopted the subdivision ordinance of the County of Macon, North Carolina on or about January 25, 2010. And whereas the Board of County, uh, I'm sorry, the Board of Commissioners wishes to make an amendment to section 159.56 of the subdivision ordinance of the County of Bacon, North Carolina, as set forth below. And whereas the Board of Commissioners finds the same to be in the public interest and to promote the public health, safety, and welfare pursuant to authority vested in it by North Carolina General Statute, section 153A-121. And whereas the amendment set forth here and after is authorized by the provisions of North Carolina General Statute Section 153A-323, now therefore be it ordained by the Macon County Board of Commissioners that Section 159.56 of the Subdivision Ordinance of the County of Macon, North Carolina, and as it presently exists, is hereby amended as follows. The following language is hereby deleted from Section 159.56 of the Subdivision Ordinance of the County of Macon, North Carolina. Quote, slope hazard designation as indicated on the Macon County slope hazard maps, end quote. This amendment of the Subdivision Ordinance of the County of Macon is adopted and effective on blank 2012. Okay. Okay, thank you, Chester. Uh, and we'll begin the hearing at this point. And uh, in case you came in and weren't here for the first um, hearing, we'd ask you to uh, identify yourself and also tell uh, your, your place of residence, if you would. Uh, we'll begin, I think the first name was Mike Jackson. Mike? Yes. So again, my name is Mike Jackson. I live in Franklin. Um, and I want to just try to make some brief comments uh, regarding uh, these amendments that are, that are before you. Uh, I think like most people in this room, uh, I believe in free markets. I believe in capitalism. And, uh, and we probably don't have to review all of this, but just for giggles, I, I want to just kind of review some of the <coughs> components that make that such a powerful force. Um, and then there are three basic things. You have rational agents or people who are going to act in their own self-interest and try to make decisions that are going to benefit them when they're making decisions. And then you have competition, and you also need to have information. So when people have all the information, when consumers or buyers have the information, um, they can make an informed decision that's going to serve their uh, interest. And then. What that does is put pressure on the competitors, the people competing for their business, to make sure that they're innovating new products, that they're bringing uh, quality products to market, uh, et cetera, et cetera. And I think that this move to hide the maps or to move the maps from any uh, mention within the county deprives people of information and ultimately information is freedom. 
So by removing that information, you're taking people's freedom away from their, their ability to make good purchasing decisions. Consumers, people like the Olivers who are coming here, who want to live here, build a house here, they need to have that information to be able to make a good decision. They're living with the decision that they've made uh, now because they didn't have all the information. It's because I believe in markets that I referenced earlier that uh, I haven't been committed only to an ordinance in regard to the, to the slope debate. I think that there's a real place to talk about how the market could help to solve some of these problems we've done without <coughs> using this board in any fashion. Some people uh, that are on my side may disagree, but I still think that there's a discussion to be had there. Now, just before I, I left the office today, I had a conversation uh, with our accountant who's evaluating some vendors uh, in our office. And she said, you know, I have this guy, he goes to my church, and, uh, or, you know, he knows a guy that goes to my church, and I have a connection to him, I really want to use him. But he just seems like he's not giving me all, all the information. And I have this other guy over here, and I don't really know him, but he's giving me the information. I feel much more comfortable in that situation. I think that the problems we run into uh, with the slope maps um, come when we try to hide that information, and then people find out on the back end. It looks bad. Better to be up front, say, this is what they are, this is what they do and don't do, this is how they can be of value to you, and that that alleviates some of those concerns. I would encourage you to uh, not uh, delete this language from the subdivision ordinance and to reconsider your positions as they relate to those maps. Thank you. Okay, thank you, Mike. Uh, next we have uh, Vic Brown. Again, my name is Vic Drummond, 536 Timmercrest Drive in Franklin. I urge you to adopt the proposed amendment to the subdivision ordinance to remove the specified sentence. Sometime in June of 2010, the downslope hazard map of Macon County, published in 2006 by the North Carolina Geological Survey, was briefly integrated into the county's GIS system <coughs> removed a month later. In an article dated July 23, 2010, in the Franklin Press, titled Slope Maps Removed from County Website, Derek Rowland, our county planner, was reported as saying, quote, they had determined through research that while the maps were valuable tools, they are designed to serve as a guide for general areas rather than taking that down to a parcel level. Continuing with the quote, Roland explained that the North Carolina Geological Survey maps are not an official county document. Continuing on, he's quoted, we've acknowledged the fact that it will, be, it will take additional research before we can incorporate them into the GIS site. He added, that in the future, if the county does proceed with an ordinance that incorporates the maps, it would not be without public input and the extensive research necessary to incorporate the maps into Macon GIS. That's the end of the quote. So if this was the county's position in July 2010, why wasn't the sentence being considered for removal tonight not removed then? I hope you remove this sentence tonight. It is certainly long overdue. Since June 2010, I have done a lot of research into the methodology used to create this map. Why? Because I found that portions of my home and lot are supposedly in a high or moderate downslope hazard area on the map. Now for a very controversial sentence. In my opinion, the map borders on being junk science. The map is based on an oversimplified mathematical formula called, quote, stability of infinite slopes with seepage, end of quote, to try to predict through a computer program what is going to happen in the natural process of erosion 
of the mountains of Macon County after a six inch rain over a 24 hour period. Three minutes. Three minutes. Three minutes. If, I'm, if I may, I, I just want to say that I will unequivocally state that there aren't powerful enough computers or smart enough scientists in this world to predict with accuracy what is going to happen or when it will happen as our mountains continue to naturally erode. Even the North Carolina Geological Survey implies that the dubious value of the map would then includes the following disclaimer of liability on the map itself. Quote, these products, however, are intended to serve for general <coughs> planning purposes only and are provided on an as-is basis. It's an unfortunate this downslope hazard map can't be made to go away, but whether it's right or wrong, good or bad, it will be around forevermore. I, I think the county needs to remove all references to the map <coughs> unless it wants to find itself trying to defend its usage in court. Property owners have suffered financially with this improper application by potential buyers. I hope the tax assessor figures out how to determine, quote, comparable values if this map continues to be referred to in this or any other county ordinance. I urge you to remove the specified sentence. Thank you. <coughs> Thank you. Uh, next, we have uh, Lonnie Cruz. What's that? Come around here, it's right here. Oh, okay. Gotcha, okay. Okay, we have uh, <coughs> Don Swanson. Uh, gentlemen, I'll give back some of uh, Mr. Grumman's time. He speaks for me. He has researched the situation thoroughly, spoke intelligently. I encourage you to Act, uh, act and um, pass the proposed amendment relative to the subdivision ordinance. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Swanson. We have uh, Norrell Kirkland. Good evening, Commissioners. Thank you. I'm Norrell Kirkland. I live out by the airport here in Franklin. Agreed. I am really pleased to see and say that that is not an element here we have to worry about in our county. Even the wealthiest person who lives in this county bends over backwards to make life one of quality for all of us. But when you do something that threatens our livelihood, our ability to make a living, to even just get by, well, you're gonna find very, very strong reaction. And that certainly is evident by the turnout tonight. On the other hand, none of us want to be negligent or contribute to death. And so it behooves us not to build in places that are ris very risky. Having been here for 11 years and a former lawyer who was very involved with major negligence cases, sometimes involving as many as 400 houses sliding down mountain slopes, I have seen negligence that goes way beyond what we've experienced here in Macon County. But I can truthfully say that the burden is on you to make a wise decision for the good of all of us, not just particular interest groups. So I charge you, bring out regulations that make very clear all information to a prospective buyer. Don't let the real estate agents make cover up things that a buyer would not be able to understand. And they will thank you in the long run for being, it, being honest and enabling them to make a wise decision. After all, these regulations do not say you can't build here. They simply say <coughs> there may be a danger, something else from the normal. You should consider hire an engineer and get a professional opinion. Thank you, Robert. Next, we have uh, David Culpepper. Hello again, David Culpepper, uh, Patton Valley again. Um, I love maps, period, and I think this map is, is really pretty to look at. I don't think it should be used for legislative purposes. 
as I think it's Miss Oliver pointed out, uh, talking about how the subdivision division ordinance is good. I think it actually should be used as an example of how government legislation and regulation actually fails the people because it's provided to uh, to guarantee some sort of safety and that the subdivision will become a proper subdivision, and it clearly hasn't. So your legislating of the subdivision ordinance has failed. Um, just like most government regulation ends up failing, uh, I would not use the maps for legislative purposes uh, because the science is bunk. And I believe there's a gentleman sitting up here right now whose house is directly in the path of one of these red lines on this map. Uh, and I think he would argue that the map is bunk as well. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, Miss. Oh, thanks. Sorry, no problem. Uh, Ms. Kathy Kingsley. I didn't know this was going to be coming up tonight, but it's something I feel really strongly about. And I, in regard to these maps, I'll, I'll try to be brief. We're extremely fortunate to have these. Some counties are spending money to get their maps done, and we were able to get it done under the wire, and, and we have them. They're a tool. Last night's weather map wasn't absolutely uh, accurate, but it gave us a way to sort of predict what might be on the ground this morning. And, and they are one of many tools that can be used. You don't throw away information and not use it. Um, I, as a teacher, I can't imagine telling students they couldn't have one bit of information to solve a problem. And I, so this one, this one really for me is, uh, I feel strongly about it, maybe more than term limits. But um, as a taxpayer, I don't, I don't want this information to be hidden and, and not addressed. So I would ask you to not uh, adopt this amendment. Thank you, Ms. Tindley. Uh, Michelle Maston. I was not able to finish, but um, I am a resident of Macon County. My address is 129 Golden Falls Boulevard. I also own and pay taxes on over $10 million worth of real estate in this county and own two businesses. So I believe my Why talk about that, Bill? She said she wasn't a resident. You fell around now. Okay. Go ahead, Michelle. I, I just wanted to let you know that, and also that I agree in adopting to remove those maps off the, the record there. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, James, James Birch. Thank you. I've been uh, doing some of the things. Uh, I used to go to some of the meetings. I sort of gave up because... Uh, I strongly believe that the real estate, we can make, make these meetings all we want to. We can do them for another 50 years, but as long as real estate controls the county and maybe to where my kids can never build, my grandkids, because it's priced out, it was priced out, they have a monopoly. Only nobody, nobody participates in the real estate. It's, it's, not even, it's not even democratic. It's not even democratic in Appalachian Mountains because real estate might have been all right in big cities, but when it moved to these Appalachian Mountains, it was a disaster. Nobody, you got a few people that's made a lot of money out of it. They, they monopolized the price. They moved the prices up with the buyer and the seller. And the lower income people, even the middle class people, never have a chance to buy a piece of land no more or build. The, the, the steep slope, uh, there's four lots right above me, five lots, it's back up for sale again. And if they, if someone builds that and tries to uh, buy those lots and tries to build out on, build on, it's going to wash me out down below. It's going to ruin my water in the place where I've lived for years. It's wrong. It's morally wrong. It shouldn't be allowed. Uh, it's, it's not. It's not. We're not a part of it no more. Most of the people ain't. Real estate is the worst thing that ever happened and came into these mountains. Worst thing that ever happened. It should be made illegal and go back between the buyer and the seller. And it'll never, it ain't gonna get no better. They're greedy that sell them other off. I hate it, I hate it, or it's become. I grew up here 
I don't even feel a part of it no more. Thank you, Mr. Burke. That was uh, that concludes the speakers we had to, to sign up for that. Um, anyone else? Get any? Gentlemen, we can ask questions or discuss this uh, now. We can do some now, some later. We have it on the agenda to take up in the latter part of the, the agenda. Does any commissioner have anything to add to that at this point? I have some questions I'd like to ask you planning guys. We, we can do that later. If, uh, okay. Jack? Okay, we'll need to, uh, if that's all the comment, we'll close that hearing. And thanks to each of you who spoke. Um, we now take up the third uh, comment period.